。好的，我们今天开始讲精神分裂症。那么这一章的名字叫《精神分裂症与其他精神障碍》。首先，我们来看一下，这位是一位伟大的数学家。相信大家如果看过这部影片《美丽心灵》的话，应该会熟知他的名字，叫约翰·纳什。那么，约翰·纳什呢？他是一位非常著名的，为数学做出很大贡献的这么一位有天分的数学家。但是呢，他同时也有着非常大的挑战在他的生活中，因为他身患精神分裂症。曾经让他很长时间处在这样疾病的状态下，而不能正常工作，不能返回校园。但是呢，他的妻子帮助他，在医生的治疗下，勇敢地去和病魔抗争，最终呢，写下了这一段神话。遗憾的是，在二零一五年的时候，八十二岁的约翰·纳什和他的妻子，在加州因车祸而去世。不然，或许他还会给我们带来更多的惊喜。那么接下来呢，我们就来看一下约翰·纳什一个访谈。那么有一位医生呢，走到了约翰·纳什的家里，对约翰·纳什和他的儿子进行了一段采访。那么接下来，请看录像。Going into telephone booths and talking, and then I began to hear voices that I thought were like. Calls being made to me. Waste is not good. Is it one voice or many voices? I have several. Men, women. Uh, does it make you feel bad, or do you, can you pretty much ignore them? Well, I try to ignore them, but sometimes it does make me feel bad. Mm -hmm. I see. And what is it that makes you feel bad? The remarks that that I hear, you know, being called a bum and stuff like that. So you start to take it personally. Yes, sir. <laughs> I hear、uh, sometimes I hear voices. I hear names that are talking to me, but the voices don't have names. I don't hear the voices. I don't want the. I don't want, I don't want the voices.、No. The whole world was out to get me, and out to get my family, and it was just awful. For many victims, mental illness is a lifelong trap. For others, it's a recurring nightmare that shatters periods of normal life. It takes an exceptional mind to cross the frontier between sanity and madness at will. Insanity, when you're really in it, it's it's like a dream which you you can't wake up. Nowadays, as the dream is ending, I realize that it is a dream, and then I wake up. <laughs> John Nash Jr. represents two of the greatest extremes of the human mind: a Nobel Prize-winning mathematician and a long-time victim of schizophrenia. As a graduate student in 1950 at Princeton University, Nash helped pioneer an entirely new field of mathematics called game theory. His groundbreaking ideas are at the root of modern economic theory. But it would take over 40 years before Nash was rewarded the Nobel Prize in Economics for that very theory. 40 years because, in 1959, at the age of 30, his remarkable mind short-circuited, and John Nash Jr. was hospitalized against his will for schizophrenia. The first time I was taken to the McLean, which is a very highly rated hospital, there were policemen. I, I struggled with them a little at the doorway. But resistance was futile, and we realized I'd been captured like a, a chessman on a chessboard. For the next 30 years, Nash's life swung back and forth, from the depths of insanity to the heights of intellectual reasoning, from homelessness in the streets of Europe to an honorary position at Princeton. His brain was subjected to insulin treatment, electroshock, high doses of medication, 
and still today, Dr. Nash is in a constant struggle between irrational and rational thinking. So ultimately, I managed to get beyond hospitalization, but without actually being sane. But it, in a sense, was a sort of forced lucidity. I was forced to accept normal thinking. So I had, but I, when I came, uh, when I went, returned to the delusional thing, I felt like I was escaping from having been under uh, 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 thought police that were forcing me to behave normally. John Nash had two sons before he developed schizophrenia. Nash has passed on both his genius and his schizophrenia to his younger son, Johnny. Dr. Nancy Andreasen has come to meet with Nash, his wife Alicia, and their son as she pursues her research in the links between creativity and mental illness. So, you're a psychiatrist? I'm a psychiatrist, yeah. What's your name? My name's Nancy. Nancy. Andreasen is the last name. I see. I'd like to talk to you, you know, a little bit about what you were interested in when you were growing up. Uh, your experiences well, playing chess. Okay. okay, just leave me with questions. I'll try to answer them. Okay. Um, when you first started having symptoms, as we would say, I was in my teens. You were in your teens. I was a born again uh, Christian. I was I was a fanatic. Mm -hmm. I was a religious fanatic. Mm -hmm. And uh, the voices I heard, I interpreted them all as God. You know. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things did the voices say? I walked out into the middle of the highway, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they wanted me to stand there in the middle of the highway. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of thing, you know, mm -hmm. pretty severe. Pretty severe. Yes. Yeah. I didn't realize that my father had passed on anything to me. I, I was just caught by surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was not savvy like you psychiatrists mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who know that that sort of thing runs in the family. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, you know, I was completely caught by surprise. I was flipped out at the time. You know, I had given up my chess and my math. Uh, but I d didn't really suspect that I was headed for a mental hospital. So you were in your teens, but you also managed to recover enough so that you were able to go back and eventually get a PhD in math. Well, that's a remarkable thing, yeah, that uh, during my religious insanity, I lost all ability to do mathematics. I had been a mathematical genius, you know, 800 on the essay, on, on the achievement test. but. Uh, I lost all ability to do mathematics. I couldn't add a column of numbers. Mm. But then I went back to school. The voices disappeared, and I took up math again. And I regained all my mathematical, uh, all the mathematical abilities I had lost. And I went on to get uh, a PhD. Yes. Mm -hmm. I published and I taught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I followed in my father's footsteps. So to, to do honor to to my father, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And Johnny Nash, you, like his father. Yeah often experienced so periods where he was able to regain his full intellectual capacity. But the psychosis would always reoccur, making life a roller coaster between insanity and lucidity. But I'm still uh, suffering, you know, uh, the symptoms of mental illness. Uh, you know, I, I, I hallucinate, I still hallucinate, you know, but I can function. I function despite the mental illness, functioning schizophrenia. Well, you mentioned hallucinations. What do you mean explicitly? You mean a voice, or what do you mean? Both uh, auditory and visual. You see something? Yes. What Didn't you, you know that I, that I have visual hallucinations? Well, you claimed it once in the hospital. I remember one time... But you're not keeping up with me at all if you don't know that I have visual well, hallucinations. I don't uh, what, what is it? What is happening? I have visual hallucinations, Dad. What do you see? I see things in the air that aren't there, you know. How do you know? I mean, like ghostly figures or what? Like, yeah, like, like ghosts, yeah. Shadows? You see shadows? I see, you know, in the air. So it must be shadows, right? What, what do you see in the air? You could call them shadows. Well, he hasn't even kept up with me. Well, you don't. You haven't. You haven't said that well, this it's is. Well, hard. We don't. We don't see it. You have to tell us that yeah. you see. It's. Uh, you know, your parents are not your doctors, and so it's. And they don't want to intrude on your life. I. Uh, that's too bad. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's been very nice talking to you. Thanks very much. Anger, withdrawal, isolation, denial. 
The symptoms of the disease and the reaction to them make treatment only more difficult. 看完约翰纳什的这个录像，我们大家可以看到，在约翰纳什和他的儿子身上都有一些幻听这样的一个症状，并且呢，当他们发病的过程开始的时候，他们的做科学的这样的一个正常的思维能力就会丧失。在这段发病的这个急性期过去之后，他们俩呢又能够充分的回到正常的生活中来。尽管还有幻听，但是呢，他们学会了如何去和这样的一个幻听啊、妄想啊去做一个这个斗争，有意识的去对抗这样的一个异常的思维或者异常的感觉。那么，在这个家庭中，我们看到。约翰纳什，他的小儿子，他一共有两个儿子。那么他的小儿子也患有了精神分裂症。那么我们大家可能会想到，在未来我们讲到的病因里边，是不是会和遗传因素有关系呢？接下来呢，我们就顺着这几个方向去谈一谈，在约翰纳什和他的儿子身上所发生的这样的一种症状和障碍。到底是怎样去诊断和治疗的，并且呢，这样的一种疾病最开始是如何被人们所认识的？到现在，我们又如何去从各个方面去理解它的病因？这是我们整个这一章里边想要跟大家探讨的问题。嗯